good friend this is magic brad with synergy cafe and the synergy collaborative if you've got your coffee this is a minnesota loon by the way it's not a duck it looks like a duck but it's a minnesota loon because that's where i'm from and i got my friend lauren how you doing lauren hey brad how you doing wise man not wheeze man i see your uh, post you got like the <laughs> wise what's your what's your blog thing wise words i've been doing something called wise words but yeah i also think that's an existing company <laughs> but but is it wise like the way you spell it uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's a translation software, wise words. So I have to be careful with that. <laughs> ah, no big deal. I mean, you can change it and put a Z on it or something. Change your name to Wiseman. Do like Prince did, you know, when they gave him grief, turned himself into a symbol. <laughs> yeah, deal with that. So <laughs> I'm not much for regulations and all that stuff. We're all independent and that's the way it works. So how you doing down there? You're you're living down in Florida and there was some rain and stuff down there, I know. We had a little bit of rain, a couple storms. We're 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 doing okay. I, I think the, the Hurricane Irma was a pretty amazing landscaping company. They cleaned up a lot of trees. <laughs> well, there we're having challenges in the real estate world up here because a lot of uh contractors and stuff went south to do work. So there's a lot of real estate investors that are having a hard time finding people with a hammer. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, the, the, the work, there's a lot of work down here right now for them. Yeah. Do, do you think there was more hurricanes this season than there have been previously down south? I'm not sure. I moved here from L.A. three years ago. It definitely has been the strongest season since I've been here. Um, and, you know, every time looking up on the looking up on the weather channel or the news, it's this tropical storm or this depression or this might happen or that might happen. So it's, I, I know it's been an active season. I'm not sure if it's the most though. But there seemed like there was a lot with the whole Puerto Rico thing and the Texas thing. And it just seemed like there was a lot of stuff going on this season. And maybe it's just because social media gives all that stuff to us. And I've been spending too much time on Facebook. Maybe. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a lot. And, and I've, with, with each storm, I find myself creating a little bit more for preparing and, and having things ready because this 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 season technically i believe goes into november so we still got a ways to go oh god well i live up here in minnesota where we get tornadoes once in a while other than that uh, no earthquakes no hurricanes <laughs> let's get some snow <laughs> very cold winters i love minnesota but i've, I've been there in february and wow that the the twin cities <laughs> were that was in the the, the twin negative degrees <laughs> It is pretty cold, but what I really love about it up here is the change in seasons. Because some people think that it's cold all the time, but it's 90 and 100 in the summer here. It does get oh, yeah. hot. And uh, we got the, the leaves that change color and the spring when I, all the, the flowers come out and stuff. So I, I just love the, we actually have good four good seasons and they're very definite. Where I lived out in California and you really couldn't tell when Christmas was around because it's sunny. Short sleeve. Yeah, the the uh, the, the Christmas uh, lights on the palm trees. That, that my first Christmas there it was it was a little funny. That's kind of weird. So you and I are both in this whole marketing world. You're you're pretty much totally self employed, right? Yes. That's what I think everybody should do. I mean, I, I shouldn't say that because some people like to have that nine to five job, but I call them wage slaves because you're you're limited as far as what you can do. And if you're complaining about I don't have enough money at the end of the month, start yourself a side hustle and. Save some taxes, you know? <laughs> That's my thoughts. Is your main thing all marketing, though? My main thing is the brand strategy. Oftentimes, what comes before the marketing, planning out the message of what, of, of what a business, a brand, a service wants to create, and looking at that psychological, that mental, even that vibe of what you're saying and how what you're saying can be perceived. Because it really does come to intention versus perception. And not trying to make everybody happy, but clarifying and clearing the road so that your message is coming across personalized and authentic from you, it will help you stand out in whatever whatever area you're in. So you're, you're talking more about like brand perception, because um, I, I use the Magic Brad brand. And the reason I do that is I knew early on that this internet thing was going to be a chaotic and the Brads and the Brents and the Bryans and the Brandons are all going to get blended together into, who's that guy? So I created Magic Brad, and uh, it, it works really well, too. It's, I mean, I don't see a return on investment kind of thing, but when I go to a networking event and I start talking, yeah, my name is Brad, I do this thing with, uh, you know, marketing, and all of a sudden they go, you're Magic Brad, right? So the brand thing does work, and just having it out there, it seems kind of weird, like, okay, Magic Brad, is that what I call you? Well, no, not really, but that's my brand, and people know it. 
<laughs> and and that's and and that's exactly how you stand out as opposed to a given name or the name of a product. And then the 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 additional level of pre precision is then what you do, how you do it, why you do it, how you do it different, the stories behind you, the stories of what you did as a music a musician, as a magician that draw into the magic around marketing. That becomes the foundation of the larger scale of your brand that separates you from the curbside profits that are screaming or trying to reiterate, you know, the Tony Robbins or the Gary Vanderchuk, uh, you know, yeah. verbatim. I'm going to have to start watching your podcast or listening to your podcast and watching your stuff more. Cause I know that's one of my challenges. I'm entrepreneurial and I've got what I call entrepreneurial ADD cause I'm all over. I'll do whatever, whatever seems really cool at this moment in time. And it's really hard to put me in a box. Like, I'm I'm in this uh, weekly networking event, and there's you know chiropractors, there's financial planners, there's real estate agents, there's massage therapists, and then there's Brad. What do you do? They're they're really confused as far as what I do because I do everything from helping people with social media or just consulting on strategy and and event marketing, or I'll do a magic gig once in a while. So what does Brad do? Is he a magician? Is he a marketer? Is he a consultant? And it's really hard for them to say this is what he does. <laughs> Well, even coming up with that singular term, even if you have to make it up yourself, then from there, showcasing through content like you already do, the variety. I call myself a brand precision, uh, brand precision marketing strategist and counselor. Then from there, I showcase how I can work with artists, how I can work with entrepreneurs, how I can work with entertainers, where I can go in with social media, where I can go in with speaking. What I, what I do is it all dials back to a message that is broad enough, but almost uniform enough so that I can showcase a much wider array. I came from the music industry. I was a drummer and music producer for, for years and I still bring in elements. I don't drum anymore, but I talk about this is how music could tie to a law group. And in the same way for what you do, there's, you know, I mean, maybe it's something like the Renaissance ADD entrepreneur strategist. <laughs> I, I do call myself the, I call my, over the place. I do call myself the marketing alchemist. That's on my marketing page, the marketing alchemist. There you go. <laughs> Turning leads into gold. So I don't know if that's too corny or whatever, but I get what you're saying. Just kind of put it out there and then the brand, if, if people need what it is that I have, they'll come and find it as opposed to me trying to sell them on I'm the best kind of thing. Well, the reinforcement in the best is, is not saying the best, but just continually sharing content that draws your authority and your authenticity. With every show that you do with Synergy Cafe, with every post that you put up, whether you're talking about a, a tip for someone, whether you're talking about this, whether you're talking about that, you give a sense to people what you can do. And for those that are going to take the time and scroll down your page and look at these different videos and watch Synergy Cafe, those are the people that are going to work with you the best. In organizing that message and that wide message of how it goes out, You'll reach more and more people over those that are just messaging and saying, hire me, hire me, hire me, hire me, hire me, hire me. Right. Be the person to say, this is what I know. This is why you should hire me. I, I rarely, I mean, I put pieces out every week and a half or so of I'm available if you want to hire me. But the rest of the time, the content is the justification of what I know and why you should hire me. Do you think... Do you think that's really important to put that sort of a sort of a call to action thing at the end of all your things, kind of, kind of? Because I don't do that enough. And, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Everything that I do, the call to action is in the end. I mean, the I like to think about it as the three audience content structure. I'm going to share something that whether someone has known me for ten years, known me for ten minutes, has no idea who I am. That they can all enjoy that, and then the people that have known me, they're already they're already clients. They might skip the call to action, but the people that have just met me or are familiar with me or don't know, they find their way down to the call to action, and it gives a funnel and it gives a place for them to go. We spend so much time as a whole marketing to the people that don't know who we are that if we consider still staying in touch with those that are closest to us, friends, former clients, existing clients that they can become some of our best referrals. Very good. This is, this is a very good interview. I'm supposed to be interviewing you for your knowledge, and now I'm taking all these nuggets and I'm putting them into my own head to be able to utilize them because I've been going through some things with transitions of what I'm doing because my background is in event production, and that, that uh, I don't know if you know the story behind that, but I used to produce uh, 11 shows a year 
expos that uh, gathered like about 10,000 people a weekend. And it was stressful, and I had a minor stroke. So I said, I'm not doing this anymore. So I gave it all up. And that's my experience, but I don't want to do that anymore. So I'm shifting into something that's new, and that's sharing what I know and what, I, what I've never really done. I've really just executed rather than helped other people do it. So, so maybe some of the lines for you go from, execu- from execution to empowerment for your execution. Sure. The, the, the whole story and this this bringing up a greater validity for you, a greater authority. These 11 events, all the, these 11 events a year, I was doing all this. I no longer wanted to do that. And this is why I'm doing this now. This brings up a greater authority for you than the 19 year old that's coming out there saying, well, I'm a, I'm a marketing consultant. All the years of experience that you had, plus your personal shift allows for that authentic authority to shine in the same way why I left L.A. I was doing all sorts of stuff in Los Angeles. I was all over the world for a lot of years. I didn't want to travel like that. I wanted to shift. I wanted to bring my message further than entertainment. But I still have the background and the experiences. So I use those stories, my background and my experience, not as a sell tactic, but more of this is what I did. This is what I learned. This is what I've achieved. This is where I failed. And this is now what I know. And that's so much better to reach people over, you know, that, that you need to work with me. You have, a, you have you know, 20 seconds to call, sign up right now. You, you, you have 30 seconds, you know, all, all that, all that overly done, oversaturated pressure changed out with the story of you. And that, that to be able to state, Hey, I had a stroke. It was too much that the people resonate with that and they can vicariously connect to the things that they don't want to do anymore. And maybe because of what they don't want to do anymore, what you don't do anymore there's your first connection. And then from there, they connect with your experience and your knowledge to help them with their new vision. Yeah, what I'm trying to do with people is show them how they can actually run their business from this thing. Um, right now, I'm on a laptop because it's a little easier. I don't, I don't have any platform for doing these things. But for the most part, I get to do all my social media sharing and stuff from my phone. And it's pretty cool. And uh, I think that uh, time is something we all have in common. And it's our only limitation is that uh, 24 hours in the day. And Freedom. Do you have the freedom to spend time with the people you love, your family, your friends? Or are you stuck in that job? Even some of these people that are doing what they call freedom, like in the network marketing world and stuff, they're doing the hustle. They're on the phone. They're constantly working, working, working. Are you really free if you have to do all that kind of stuff to keep your cash flowing? Oh, it's, it's, it's funny. I listened to the Elon Musk and the, the Gary Vanderchuk line about, I work this much every day. Well, I don't need your money, and I know that both of you have families, <laughs> and I wouldn't want to reject or not have the time. I, that, that's not my passion. If that's your passion and that's where you are, great. Yeah. But then even stating that, like I have, I set up my day so I can have my walk, so I can have my experiences. The water is very important for me. I need to go to the water, and and that's why I live by a cleaner ocean, not the one in not, not the Pacific in L.A. and. <laughs> The smallest things to dial in what time, like what you're saying, what time means to you and how you can make the most out of any given minute, any given hour to be as productive and effective as possible so you can have the time to do the things that you want. Right. Time time suck kind of stuff. Because I was in my networking event and they were talking about what takes all of your time because you're not using your time effectively. And somebody said Facebook. And I thought, no, I use that to my advantage. I, I take my dog out for a walk in the morning, which takes about 10 minutes. As I'm going out, I'll do a Facebook Live. When I'm done with it, I save it on my phone, then I post it. And then on my way back, I upload it to YouTube. And now the longevity is there and I can use that YouTube video for whatever I want, whenever I want. So in 10 minutes, I've covered a lot of ground and it's up there forever as far as long as YouTube's around. And and that's the beauty of it. And then the the next step too, and this is something I was doing last week. I've gone back to YouTube to clean up all my call to actions in my YouTube. I, there was an inconsistency between music, between television, between the business advising. And just like you were saying, all over the place, we're, we're, <laughs> we're cut from the same cloth. I found and revamped and rebranded my call to action and went back. And I'm in the process of adding it correctly to the 220 videos that I have on YouTube. Oh, now, you, it's not something I'm going to do overnight. I, mean, are you, I, did, I did 15 yesterday. Let me 15. interject. Are you doing that on the actual video or just in the description call to action of the videos? Are you editing the video? 
Oh, no, no, no. Just, okay. just in the description. That's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that, but I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I've already seen the results where this morning I got up and I looked at some of the, the call to actions that I fixed on videos that were four years old on Friday. And they're already pumping up in YouTube searches for the terms that I've adjusted. So it's not the, this massive, oh, I have to fix all these things. It's I'm going to slowly test this and see how this works and see how this helps to connect me. And at the same time, I mean, the, 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 the first video I ever had, I was still a music producer. The, the latest video I have, I do what I'm doing right now with branding, but they all tie together. And doing those small steps, and just like you said, you go out for that walk with that Facebook Live, you come back. All these small pieces compound. We just want to make sure that we have that brand message and the story to yeah. showcase that all, the widest story can still draw people back to all the things that you do. Very cool. Well, speaking of time, I don't like to do these too long because people have things to do and they got to get to work or whatever, or walk the dog, who knows. So I'm going to sign this one off, but if you want to stick around, we'll chat a little further. And uh, who knows, maybe this is the beginning of something we could do this ongoing and help people with their uh, marketing strategies. Absolutely. Okay, stick around, Lauren. Uh, I'm going to sign this one off. Thank you very much for watching Synergy Cafe and my friend Lauren.